looking to boost your shoulder stability and protect yourself from injury, then look no further. In this video, we are going to go through a range of exercises you can do to help, which have been split into three levels of difficulty, depending on what position you're in. First, let's discuss the differing levels of shoulder instability. The worst being from a dislocation following trauma, causing damage to the tissues, where the ball actually comes out of the socket. This can be put back in or reduced but due to tissue trauma, the shoulder can be unstable, and if having repeat dislocations, surgery may be required. Slightly less severe than that is a subluxation, where the ball comes out of the socket but pops itself back in. This can lead to a lot of tissue damage still, and instability, and in more severe cases of this, it may still require surgery if there are ongoing repeat subluxations and rehab isn't helping. Then on the other end of the scale, to a simple feeling of unsteadiness, commonly with clicking in the joint. This can be a case even with no trauma, and it's commonly associated with rotator cuff issues. Or it could just be from a hypermobility in your joints in general. No matter your current situation, these exercises will help improve your shoulder stability and prevent future injuries. Starting with early stages, this can be a very painful stage, and you want to be working on some simple rotator cuff exercises which will involve exercise number one. Keeping the elbow close to the body, the elbow bent at 90, you want to be moving the arm into external rotation, making sure the resistance is in the opposite direction to the movement. A bit of discomfort is okay, but not a lot of pain. Generally, if grimacing, then you need to make the exercise easier. And this is true for all the exercises we're gonna go through. If the movement is too painful, you can do it as an isometric. You can use a weight, your hand or a wall in order to get this resistance. Then gradually work into increasing the range. If you haven't got any cables, another good option is side lying with a weight. Again, working on the movement or if too much, then an isometric hold. Next is exercise two. This is simply the opposite movement of exercise one, moving the arm into internal rotation and the hand towards the body. You'll have the same setup for arm position, but now the resistance in the opposite plane. Same guidance applies. If the movement's too painful, then work as an isometric, just holding the weight or using your hand or a wall. You won't want to be doing this in side lying though, as the arm would have to be on the bottom and that pressure through it will likely be too painful. The final for this stage is exercise three, which is raising the arm by the side with a weight. To make this more comfortable rather than full abduction to the side, you can come into the scaptrum plane, so a bit further in front of the body, only going to the height that is most tolerable, that isn't causing a grimace. You can still do an isometric version of this, however, do this at the lower end of the movement than at the higher end. So again, pushing the arm into a wall would be the best for this. It's also one you can do in side lying, just raising the arm slightly off the body and holding the weight. The next stage is more intermediate, either from progressing through the early stage or it's just not severe to start with. We'll keep the exercise numbers in order so it's less confusing. Exercise number four, to work on stability, getting body weight through the shoulder is a great way to do this. Press ups can offer this really well and is a great exercise because of how well it can be progressed. You can start just against a wall, then two knees on a raised surface, then body weight on a raised surface, knees on the floor, then body weight on the floor, depending on how the shoulder is feeling and how difficult you find the exercise. Another way to progress this even further to really challenge that shoulder stability is using suspension trainers or rings. The lower you go on this, the harder it will be. Exercise number five, this is progressing on from exercise three, this time working on drop catches. You'll use a light weight for this in that scaption plane like before. You drop the weight and quickly catch it again. So it's a small movement of the shoulder each time, and this is much more endurance based, and it's to be built to around 100 reps. This can also be progressed further by standing on the opposite leg to challenge balance through the whole system, and therefore the shoulder position and then even further with eyes closed. Just make sure there's nothing below you in case of dropping it. Exercise number six is to progress on the rotator cuff exercises to combine movements with the sword draw. It's imagining you're drawing a sword from the opposite side. You'll bring the arm up, you'll go into external rotation and then pressing up at an angle. This can be done with a dumbbell, but even better with a cable. 
The advanced stage is for people getting through the last two stages or wanting to work on keeping shoulders stable generally. Exercise seven. This is progressing the press up and is building into a big push off and land. This can be started off more simply on the knees, pressing up with force, so hands leave the floor, then landing and repeating. This can be progressed even further by adding a clap and then continued progression to full body weight push off and land, then further again with the clap added. Reps will be low on this, only building up to around five, but working on quality reps rather than going to failure. Exercise number eight. This is progressing, adding the body weight through the shoulder. Again, a really nice one to progress through stages. It will involve putting weight through a single arm and moving the body around it. The easiest of this, which is more intermediate stage, would be against a wall, then progressing to a raised surface, then on the floor while on your knees, and then more advanced on the floor with full body weight. This can be progressed if against the wall or floor even further by using a ball and moving the ball instead of the body. Use two hands if you're on the floor, or you can also use a suspension trainer or rings working on small movements of the shoulder to do a very similar thing. Exercise number nine. This is the ultimate and it is doing handstands. Go into a handstand against the wall, then work on just moving the legs off to challenge the shoulders, just going on and off the wall each time. If that's too hard and you keep falling, then just holding the feet against the wall will still be effective. To progress this further is moving into handstand press-ups. Lower down controlled and slowly and press back up and repeat. We do have a bonus exercise for you which you can try, which is using a barbell going into a military press. Instead of just using the bar, you can add weights on the end that are attached to bands. The band will cause random movement of the weight, will really challenge the shoulder and its stability. If you haven't got a barbell, you can even try this with a kettlebell and doing it inverted with a single arm. Just inverting it will mimic trying to add that extra stability and challenge that shoulder. So now we know all the exercises to work on, but you also need to know how to progress reps and exercises. Otherwise, you won't be able to implement the rehab effectively. That's why you need to watch this video next. If you want to learn about how to effectively and safely progress the reps and exercises and for other pointers on how to approach recovery in the best way.